What is your name, please? My name is Eamon Andrews. What is your name, please? My name is Eamon Andrews. What is your name, please? My name is Eamon Andrews. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Eamon Andrews and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you and good evening. We're here again with our game of deliberate misrepresentation wherein four presumably smart persons try to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. Tell the Truth is brought to you by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. <laughs> My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. Now, these three people all claim to be Eamon Andrews. Only one is the real Eamon Andrews. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they, of course, do not have to stick to the truth. A panel, you'll find in front of you copies of an affidavit. Will you please follow along while I read? I, Eamon Andrews, was born and raised in Dublin. For a time, I was the amateur middleweight boxing champion of Ireland. And now I am considered the foremost sports commentator of the British Isles. In addition, I appear on British television as the moderator of This Is Your Life and What's My Line. Now, while our contestants are taking their places, I'll remind you that these three people all claim to be Eamon Andrews, British television personality. Remember again, of course, as usual, that only the real Eamon Andrews is required to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to register your vote for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real Eamon Andrews. And we'll start this questioning round with uh, Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Well, uh... Number one, I suppose we ought to start with the obvious question. Who's the new mayor of Dublin? Oh, it's uh, uh, Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll. Yeah. Um, number one, again, um, who won the heavyweight British title? Um, put it the other way. No, that's right. Who, who won the heavy, heavyweight British title from Jack Peterson in 1934? 1934, I have yeah. no idea. Number two. I was an amateur boxer. Oh, I thought you might know that, being a commentator. <clears throat> Number two. I don't know either. Number three. I'm not sure, but it might have been Len Harvey. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, in cricket, what is a sticky wicket? Well, this is a very interesting phrase. It's an idiomatic phrase as well as a practical phrase. It refers to the game cricket we play in the British Isles. And it refers to the wicket. This uh, is the entire wicket, 22 yards of lawn between two uh, wickets, which are three stumps with two bales on top. A sticky wicket is when the wicket has been rained on. And it means that uh, this is very good for the bowler. And the bowler, you see, is, uh, <laughs> is the same as you have uh, what, time is it? what you call a pitcher. Thank you, know? you very much, number one. You had number answer. two. <laughs> what is a pig in a wicket? I beg your pardon? What does a pig in a wicket mean? I have no idea. Number three, uh, where is the Blarney Stone and how do you kiss it? The Blarney Stone is in Ireland, and you kiss it by being held by the legs and bent over it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gardner. Uh, number three, uh, when were you middleweight champ? Uh, 1945. 45, so about 12 years ago. How much have you gained since in weight? Um, about 30 pounds. About 30 pounds. Uh, number one, what was the full name of the Marquis of Queensborough? Full name of the Marcus of Queensborough? Mm. I, I, I don't know his full name. He was the gentleman that invented all the rules in about 1880. Uh, number two, what's my line? <laughs> I beg your pardon? I say, what's my line? It's a show. Uh, what, what, what's my line? <laughs> uh, all right, let's skip that one completely. Uh, number three, who was the most... Who was the least? <laughs> <laughs> who was the in-between, Polly? Number two, uh, have you ever been on uh, What's My Line in America? Yes, I have. Um, 
<clears throat> Have you ever been compared to John, to, to call the John Daly of England? Have I been? Yes, uh, number two. Idiomatically, not physically. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, I understand what you mean. Uh, <laughs> number three, uh, could you tell me what station are you on in England? BBC. Uh, what are the other two stations, number three? There's um, commercial television as opposed to BBC. I see the, uh, the name of the station such as BBC, Granada, uh, well, there's uh, ITV. Oh, All the time you. we have, it's time to vote. Without consultation, I want you now to mark your ballots and select, if you will, number one, number two, or number three. May I remind you that for every incorrect vote, our challenger's team will receive $250. That means, of course, if they fool the entire panel, they can divide as much as $1,000. All right, panel, have you marked your ballots? You haven't, Polly? Have you now, Polly? For whom did you vote, Polly? Oh, I voted for number one. Uh, number one seemed to be very sharp on, on sticky wickets. <laughs> Which I sort of like, I think. I think anybody who knows anything about a sticky wicket ought to be the right one. <laughs> Ralph Bellamy, for whom did I you vote, Ralph? for number one. <laughs> Again, the uh, sticky wickets, and also he had uh, John Daly's kind of um, verbiage there. He was uh, sort of goes until stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, you voted for... Number three. Well, he looked to me like an Irishman who perhaps had kissed the Blarney Stone. <laughs> and hi, Gardner. I also voted for number three. First of all, standing up there, he looked more like a former middleweight, even though he gained weight. And secondly, you do kiss the Blarney Stone in the position that he did uh, mention. Well, there we are. Votes are all in, the minds are made up. Let's see how well you scored now at home and you folks here in our studio audience as well. Let's find out which one of these distinguished gentlemen is the real British television personality. Will the real Eamon Andrews please stand up? <laughs> Looks like we're being challenged by Polly right away. Polly, what's the matter? Oh, no, I'm not challenging him. I'm just very mad at him because I was I was sure it was you until the last question I asked, no, no, saying no. to name the, the three stations and you didn't come out with BBC, no, but, Granada, and Diffusion. No, no, that's because you had the wrong information, Polly. There are only two stations. There are several subcontractors in the one station, but there's only two oh, channels. Oh, I asked Would you mind wrong, sending then. this later because i got to find out about number one, who are you really and what do you do? <laughs> My name is Charles Dean. I'm a motion picture director from London, England. <laughs> and number two, how about you, sir? My name is Robert Trench Thompson. I'm the general manager for BOAC in the United States. Well, as you can see, there were exactly two incorrect votes for a total of $500 from Geritol. Hope you had fun visiting us. We enjoyed having you with us. Good night and the best of good luck to you, gentlemen. <laughs> Now let's have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Joan Penn. What is your name, please? My name is Joan Penn. What is your name, please? My name is Joan Penn. All right, panel, again, you have copies of affidavits. Will you please follow along while I read you this one? I, Joan Penn, am 12 years old, and I'm in the fifth grade. I play on the school baseball team and work as a babysitter after school. Last year, my picture appeared in the newspaper when I won the bubblegum blowing championship of Chicago, Illinois. Well, it's time once again to play our game. Now, these three charming young people all claim to be Joan Penn, Chicago's bubblegum champ. Remember, only the real Joan Penn is required to answer your questions truthfully. And uh, I see our challenges are all set, so let's start this round with uh, High Gardner. Hi. That is gum you're chewing, isn't it? <laughs> As being baseball players, I wonder whether you were chewing on tobacco or something. Uh, uh, number one, uh, what do you have to do to win a bubble contest? Well. First, you have to uh, get a certain 
size bubble in order to qualify. And out of about 500 children, only 50 or 60 made that. And then he had to blow another bubble, and the five biggest were then in the left finals, and then the one who blew the biggest bubble won. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just as I thought. Uh, number number uh, two, what is the name of the newspaper that printed your picture when you won? It was uh, the Sun Times, the... Um... You still live in Chicago, do you? Yes. Uh -huh. The Tribune, I think. Polly? Uh, number three, uh, how big was the bubble you won with? It was 12 and three-quarter inches. 12 and three-quarter inches? How do they go about measuring a bubble? <laughs> they use our, uh, caliper. A what? Caliper. <laughs> a dull caliper. caliper. <laughs> a very yeah. dull caliper. A caliper. Uh, uh, tell me, uh... Don't you think they should have contest number three to, like, uh, the prize for talking the plainest with a large wad of bubble gum in your mouth? <laughs> well, uh... We'll let her mull that one over. Yeah. We go on to Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Uh, number two, where's Will Met, Illinois? I don't know. Number three, where's Will Met, Illinois? I don't know. Number one, where's Will Met, Illinois? <laughs> 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 Well, it's right next to Chicago. Uh, number one, uh, who taught you to blow bubbles? My daddy. <laughs> what does he do for a living? He's a dentist. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Well, number two, uh, this is a very happy moment in my life because I want this information for my children who also blow bubble gum. When the bubble breaks all over your face, how do you get it off? I take the bubble gum out of my mouth and I dab it. I dab it off. <laughs> I hope my children aren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, uh, how many pieces can you chew at once? Four pieces. Four pieces. Well, uh, my, my children seem to chew more than that. Well, that's it. Our time has once again come around to time for voting. So without consultation, panel, will you mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Okay, ballots all marked. Polly, you're all voted already, huh? Who did you vote this time? <laughs> I voted for number three. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ralph, how about you? I voted for number two, mainly because she looks more like a 12-year-old. <laughs> and Kitty, you voted for? I voted for number one. Huh? Well, she seemed to have more good information about bubblegum chewing. <laughs> how about you, Hi? I voted for number three. She sort of chews like she's uh, getting ready for another contest. <laughs> <laughs> There we are now. We've had our votes in, and we've given you our uh, reasons pretty much. I hope yours are as good. Now, right now, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one way to really find out about this. Will you girls please stand up? I can really think of only one way to determine which of these lovely young misses is the real bubblegum champion. So, uh, are you ready, girls? Blow. Young lady, I understand that you are next week, I believe, going to defend your bubblegum championship at the back of the yards fair in Chicago. Is that right? Yeah, I didn't you don't know. You know about this? I know I am, but I didn't know when. Oh, you didn't know when? Well, I'm told it's at the, at the fair out there, and uh, next week is the date that I got. Let's find out about these other two young misses. Now, number one, who are you and what do you really do? My name is Elaine Lynn Magatson, and I'm going into the eighth grade, and I go to school here in New York. Good girl. <laughs> Number three, how about you? My name is Noreen Mojé. I'm in seventh grade, St. Benedict Joseph in uh, Queens, Long Island. Right. 
sure that uh, all three of you will be, yes. Can I tell the young lady, the champion that Will met, my hometown is 14 miles north of Chicago. Thank you. Now she knows. I was worried about that myself. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I want to tell you that you'll all be very happy to hear the news now because there were exactly three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 in Geritol. With those smiles on your faces and the gum in your mouth, good night and the best of good luck to you. Well, there we are. Now, in a moment, we have three new challengers coming up that we will meet and find out. May we have our third team of challengers, please? What is your name, please? My name is Pappy Boyington. What is your name, please? My name is Pappy Boyington. What is your name, please? My name is Pappy Boyington. Another team of challengers panel and another affidavit. Will you follow along with your copies while I read mine? I, Pappy Boyington, was a fighter pilot with the original Flying Tigers. In 1943, I formed the Black Sheep Squadron in the Marine Corps, and I personally destroyed 28 enemy planes. Later, I was shot down and held in a Japanese prison camp for almost two years. While in this prison, I was notified that I had been awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. All claim to be Pappy Boyington, Marine War Ace. Again, question until you hear the signal. We'll start this round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number two, when you were shot down, did you bail out? Yes, I did. What did you think of as you were floating down? Oh, I was scared to death, frankly. Number three, what was the worst feature of prisoner of war camp? The worst feature was <clears throat> I was afraid that if they found out that I had been with the Flying Tigers, that they'd execute me. Number two, who founded the Flying Tigers? Uh, Claire Snow. Do you know Dr. Margaret Chung? <laughs> I've met her, yes. Number one, how many Congressional Medal of Honors holders are there alive today? I don't know how many are alive. There have been about 2,500 awarded to date, but I don't know how many are still living. Hi, Garden. <laughs> Number two, who was, uh, who was Danny Arnstein? <clears throat> Danny Arnstein? I don't know. Number three, would you know? No, I don't know. Number one, would you know? No, I don't. Uh, Number two, is it true that servicemen of every rank have to salute a, a Medal of Honor winner regardless of their rank? Not to my knowledge. Number uh, three, uh, you were shot down, or you, rather you were shot down, uh, 28 planes. Is that correct? That's right. What type of plane were you flying at the time? <clears throat> I was flying a Corsair. Corsair. Number one, uh, you shot down 28 planes. Uh, what shot you down? Never did get his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, uh, I don't mean. I don't mean his name. I mean it's an anti-aircraft or another plane. No, it was a Z, Japanese Type Zero. What do they call uh, Japanese suicide flyers? Kamikaze. Ali. Number one, what kind of plane did you fly when you were with the Flying Tigers? P-40, Kitty Hawk. Uh, number two, uh, what is the equivalent of? Uh, of Annapolis or West Point in the, um, in the Marines. Where is it in the United States? Well, the Marines... Uh, they're are, training bases. They're, they're trained uh, in the Navy bases. Uh, number one, could you tell me? Well, our, we get our officers from Annapolis. That's what you mean. Our enlisted men come out of our own training bases. I see. Number three, could you tell me what is sake made of? It's rice. It's made from rice. I see. Number two, could you tell me what tempera is? What, what is? I didn't get Tempura, that. Tempura, T-E-M-P-U-R-A. I'm sorry, but Tempura fugits at the moment who have to go on what? to Ralph Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph. Uh, number three, does the name Lieutenant Foggergren mean anything to you? No, I'm sorry, it doesn't. Number one. What was the name again? Lieutenant Foggergren. No, it doesn't. Number two. Mm, no, I don't believe so. Number three, do uh, you happen to know who played uh, General Chenault in the movie? about the Flying Tigers. I don't go to the movies very often. Number one, you know. 
Well, if it was you, Mr. Belly, I'm embarrassed because I didn't see no, the picture. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, do you know? Who, who played you now? No, I don't. Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Number two, where did you get your name, Poppy? Well, I was, uh, about seven years older than, uh, anybody else in the squadron, so that's why they call me Pappy. <laughs> Number three, where do you come from? San Francisco. Number two, where do you come from? I come from, uh, Idaho. Number one, where do you come from? I'm from New York. Oh, that was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yes, Kitty? I've made Sorry, up my mind. Kitty. I've it's made right. up my mind. No more questions? Well, no. you hit it just in time because the signal tells me now that our time is up and it's time once again to vote. So again, will you mark your ballots? Oh <laughs> Polly, you've got it marked already. I haven't marked and already. And vote, if you will, for number one. Number two. Or number three. And we come now to a Polly Bergen with her mind made up. And that's awful. <laughs> Who'd you vote for, Polly? I voted for number three. Huh? Actually, I voted for number three because I didn't know whether it's true or not, but I thought perhaps they might have called you Pappy because of your white hair. And that was just a guess. Ralph? Number three. What was your reason, Ralph? That uh, <clears throat> white hair seemed to uh, sort of suggest uh, Japanese prison camp, and also possibly he was older than the rest of the Tigers. Kitty, who'd you vote for? Number two. Well, number two knew Dr. Margaret Chung, and I think she'd been rather a patron of the Flying Tigers early in the war. And High Gardner, your vote was for? I voted for number two because I thought number one looked young enough to eventually win the Distinguished Service Medal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we are. Votes and reasons, how well did you do? We'll find out because one of these gentlemen was the real Flying Tiger ace winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Will the real Happy Boyington please Stand up. I have had to be. Congratulations, sir. Nice to have had you here with us tonight. Now, how about number one? And who are you really, and what do you do? My name is Marvin Schachter. I'm a practicing attorney in New York. Thereby, he was pretty glib with the answers. Number three, what about you, sir? I'm Bennett Hammond. I'm president of Michael Hammond Yacht Yard in Maranek. I do a little TV and modeling on the side. Well, it was fun for us. I hope it was fun for you. Let's see exactly what we had now. We had exactly two incorrect answers at $250 each. That means a total of $500 in Geritol. Gentlemen, if you had as much fun as we did, you enjoyed your visit. Good night and the best of good luck to you. Now we'll return in just... Well, that's all we have time for tonight except to say good night, panel. Good night. Good night, bud. <laughs> and now this is Bud Collier saying good night from Geritol and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Transportation for to tell the truth, arranged by American Airlines. Guests to fall to New York aboard American famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Godman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.